Well, good morning. It is again time for homework on Wednesday. And I just want to go ahead and invite you to come on in. Come on back and let's uh, spend this time together in the Word of God. It is such a blessing to be able to be here each week to spend this time with you, to spend these moments with you. So come on in. I'm glad to see you. It's good to be back. It's good to be alive. And we give God praise this morning for life. Yes. And for health. Good morning. And for strength. Praise God. And for soundness of mind. Come on. We can call the roll. As the old saints used to say, and for the activity of our limbs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and for the blood running warm in our veins. Remember how the old saints would call the roll. We give God praise. Well, I am praising him this morning for all of that and so much more. Welcome back. If this is if you are a returner to homework on Wednesday. If this is your first time, welcome. Come on in. If this is your first timer. Jump on in here and tell me where you are viewing from. But either way, good morning to you. Uh, just a couple of quick things I'd like to uh, ask you to share this live with your networks. I believe that God has a word for us today that will strengthen us and that will encourage us and that will help us in our walk with him. And so I'm going to ask you to share this morning, jump on out there and let people know that homework on Wednesday is alive and well. Let's be grateful. Again, uh, what are you grateful for today? God has been and continues to be so wonderful, so marvelous, so kind to us that we can scarcely uh, take it in, but we give him praise. Aren't you grateful for God being in your life, for the peace that you can have in the midst of crazy situations and difficult situations. God gives us his peace. Are you grateful this morning for joy in the midst of all that's going on? I mean, we can call the roll. So listen, I need you to tell us what you're grateful for. It's, it's you know, we want to bless the Lord with the fruit of our lips, amen. We want to begin to speak well of him, to tell him how we feel about him, to, to express our gratitude and our awe. You know, when we think about him, he is awe-inspiring, isn't he? Oh, there is nobody like him. And so just always, I think it's important to take a few moments and go ahead and give him glory and praise. So today, I want to address uh, a, a topic that I that we've covered on here before, but uh, we want to come back to it today. It's a very, very familiar passage of scripture, but let's take a look at it again. It's found in Mark chapter number, tw uh, number five, verses 25 through 28. And it says this, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. And I want to talk about this morning, it, 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 let, let's give it a subject. It's internal. It's internal. There's something that happens on the inside. So if, if we were to delve into this a little bit today, it's internal. So as I said, this is a very, very familiar passage of scripture and there have been many sermons that have been preached about this woman. I've preached about her myself. And those of you who are preachers, 
especially women and even men, no doubt, have talked about this woman and we, we refer to her as the woman with the issue of blood. So let's, let's just pause right there for a moment and let's, let's try uh, as best as we can to relate step by step to this woman. So number one, this woman had an issue. And I would submit to you and to me and to everyone that we all have some issue. Now, the reality is that most of us have more than one, <laughs> right? That we have issues, that there are unresolved uh, matters in our lives. Things have transpired. We, we face some difficulties. Something has been said. Something has been done. We've been treated in a way. We've been rejected in some way. We've been talked about in some way. Harsh words have been spoken. Something has happened that has caused us pain. There's something that has happened that has caused us to suffer in some way. And, and, and what happens many times with us is that we, we want to be strong. And, and usually we don't want to give the people who hurt us the satisfaction of feeling like they've gotten the best of us. Can I get an amen there? Right? We don't want them to, to feel like, you know, they're, 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 uh, handling us or or that they've gotten the best of us. And so many times, even though we are hurt, we're wounded, we're broken, we're sad, we're upset. I mean, you can ascribe many words to how we feel, but at the end of the day, we put on what I call a stiff upper lip and we don't want to admit that we've been pierced, that we've been wounded, that something has been said or done that has left us with an issue, right? We, so we, we go, the, the issue, whatever it is, goes on the inside. It's internal. That's what we're talking about today. Uh, it's internal. And so we drive rather than many times even attempting to resolve the conflict or to have an adult or an honest conversation about how people's behavior impact us, we drive it on the inside. Now, for those of us who were raised in the African-American tradition, and somebody's going to relate to this, when, when no matter what your mom said or whatever happened, having a conversation about how she made you feel was really not an option. Can, is there anybody out there who was raised like me? You didn't confront your issues with your mother. Not in my household anyway. I don't care what was said. I don't care what was done. I don't care how it was said. I don't care how it made you feel. Having a conversation and saying, uh, you know, you hurt my feelings or I felt this way about what you said was not an option. So it, you, it went inside. Right? It became an internal thing. The issues went down on the inside. And so this woman had an issue. And so the word of God says, now her issue was that she was hemorrhaging. She was bleeding and she was bleeding internally. But here, here, here is the thing with this woman. The source of her hemorrhage was unknown, was unknown. How is it possible that we learned in our upbringing, we learned in, in the way we were socialized, in the way we were raised, that because we were not encouraged, well, not even not encouraged, because we were not allowed to express our pain and we learn to drive it down on the inside, is it possible that that tendency rolled over into our adult lives and we never developed the skills or the courage or the knowledge or the wherewithal to confront our pain when people hurt us? And so is it possible that now we have this ball of issues 
unresolved conflict, unresolved pain, unresolved hurt on the inside and now we can't trace it back. Listen, we don't know where it began. We don't know which thing set us off. We don't know which thing hurt us the most. All we know is that we have this ball of stuff going on on the inside and we don't know what to do with it. We don't have the skills. We don't have the ability. We haven't developed a mindset that says that I need to set boundaries, that I'm allowed to set boundaries, that I don't have to take uh, this, this kind of treatment, that I don't have to accept allowing people to speak to me any kind of way because we never developed that. And so now here we are, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, and we're still dealing with unresolved issues because we never developed what we needed to get to the root of it. God help us today. As I think about people that I know, and perhaps that you know some people like this, that they've been struggling for years, struggling in their emotions, struggling in it, it, to, to develop healthy, a healthy way, an emotionally healthy way of living. And they still struggle. They've been struggling for years and they really don't know why, because they haven't been able to trace it back to what really happened. They, listen, and here are some of the manifestations of these unresolved issues. They have great difficulty in maintaining healthy relationships. And that's not just romantic relationships, that's family relationships, that's a platonic friendships because they wear their feelings on their sleeves. They're overly sensitive. They require a lot of petting and caring and attention. And you just, it just wears folks out. And, 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 and so it's hard being in relationships. Their lives are oftentimes filled with frustration over things that they feel like they should be able to handle, but they can't. Or what about this? They are people pleasers. People pleasers. They ne you never know what they really mean because they never say what they mean. <clears throat> it's a lot of double talk. It's, it's beating around the bush. You can't really get to the bottom of anything with them because they can't express because it's internal. Stay with this. It's, it's, it, they learned from an early age to drive their true feelings down on the inside. Because if I express how I really feel, I might get in trouble. Or if I express how I really feel, people are not gonna like me. Or if I express how I really feel, I might get rejected. And so it has become a way of life of living on the inside and never really developing a healthy way of setting boundaries and expressing what they really want to say. Or if they're not people pleasers, they're extremely negative. You know anybody like that? I don't, the glass is always half empty. I don't care what's going on. It's never good enough. It's never enough. There's always something to pick at. There's always something to, to complain about. There's always something to point to. They, they really don't know how to build other people up. They don't know how to be encouragers because they've driven everything negative that they've heard all their lives. They've driven it down on the inside. It's internal. Perhaps they, they are this way because something happened to them that left a gaping hole on the inside. Listen, saints, it, 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 your pain, your frustration, your disappointment, whatever it is, God will help us ferret it out express it even if it's in prayer to him but i came to tell somebody this morning bring it up 
Let God help you. It's killing you. It's killing your joy. It's killing your victory. It's killing your witness. It's killing your relationships. It's internal. Let God help you bring it out to develop new ways, better ways, godly ways of dealing with your pain. You can't carry it all on the inside. It will break you down. It will destroy everything that you're trying to build. The original injury. Listen, here, here is why. And, and I'm, if this is not you, you may know someone like this. And what happens is we get impatient because it's hard. It's difficult. You constantly trying to bring these people along. You're constantly trying to encourage them, constantly trying to hold them up. And listen, the way at times gets heavy. It gets really, really heavy. But the reason that they're like this is because the original injury was not properly treated. And in fact, it was pushed down. They ran away from it. They denied it. They ignored it for so long that now at this age and stage, the damage is severe. It's severe. Listen, just because you didn't address it, it didn't go away. It's internal. It's internal. And now the damage is serious. Many times, many times the pain that we carry, it's not obvious to the naked eye. We look good. We clean up good. We, we dress up. We're well-spoken. We're well connected and we're still hemorrhaging. It's internal. But let me tell you, there are symptoms. There are symptoms that manifest in destructive behaviors. Let me, let me tell you something. Gossiping. Always talking about people. Always talking, 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 talking. And you're talking about other people because you don't know how to deal with your own stuff. Come on, Holy Spirit. Help us this morning. I, I want to push back on that. D listen, stop talking about people and deal with your own internal issues. Stop blame placing and let God help you deal with your own stuff. Pettiness, just petty. Just small minded, just small minded, always suspicious of everything, uh, looking at other people's lives under a microscope, looking for something to point to, looking for something to blame. And listen, I'm not saying these are, because listen, thank you, Father. This happens even among saved people because deliverance hasn't come. So don't sit, don't think that people who are, are saved don't indulge in some of these same behaviors. Some of us do, but you can be better because God will help you. Petty, jealousy is another symptom. You're not satisfied with your own life. You feel inferior because you've not dealt with your own issues. It's an internal thing. And so it manifests itself in jealousy and pettiness as it relates to other people. Seeking approval, always needing someone to hold your hand, to congratulate you, to tell you how great you are. No, listen, come on. It's time to move forward now. It's time to get over it. The word of the Lord says that God be for us. He is more than the whole world against us. Let God be enough for you. You don't need the approval of people when you dealt with your internal issues. Fits of anger. People just go off at the drop of a hat for no apparent reason. Why? Because there you heard about people being so thin-skinned. Thin-skinned. You never know what's going to set them off. You never know when they're going to fly off the handle and throw a hissy fit. 
and you walk around, you tiptoe around them because you don't want to encounter that rage. That's somebody that's hemorrhaging on the inside. They've not dealt with their internal issues. Somebody has wounded them and the wound has not been properly treated. They've not allowed even the Holy Ghost to help them and now they're in living in rage, uncontrollable impulses, overeating, overspending, over talking, over, over. You know how you say people are just extra. <laughs> They're just extra about everything. They over loud. You ever notice that? I, I, I know someone, honestly, that is just over loud. Why? Because they're constantly needing and craving attention. Why? Because they don't feel like they're enough. Why? Because they're bleeding on the inside. Somebody left a gaping hole in their spirit and they don't know how to be any other way. I, they feel in, invisible. They feel inferior. They feel less than. And so if I'm the loudest one here, people will notice me. Come on. Don't get angry. Pray. Don't get frustrated. Pray. That's someone who's got some internal issues going on. And they need God to deliver and to set free. And it's hard for those of us who, who deal with it. And guess what? If that's you, it's hard for people to deal with you. But I came to tell you this morning that Jesus wants to touch you. He wants you to reach out and touch him. And I promise you, you that hemorrhage can dry up today. I don't care if you're 75 years old. If you've been this way all your life, the Holy Spirit, he'll dry it up today if you'll let him touch you. But I want you to understand that it's internal and some of our behaviors have turned people off to the degree that now they are rejecting us and then that just adds more to our pain. But Jesus came to set us free. Sometimes it's promiscuity. People sleep around and, 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 and go from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship. Why? Because they're still seeking acceptance. They're still seeking approval. They're still wanting to hear from somebody that you're enough. But guess what? No man, no woman, nothing you can buy. I don't care how big your house is, how expensive your car is, whose name is in your clothes. No one can heal that gaping hole in your spirit but Jesus. If you fill it with one man, you're going to have to fill it with another one because this one is going to come up short. If you fill it with one car, the car is going to need to replace it. But I promise you today, if you will let the Holy Spirit get down on the inside, if you can hear the voice of Jesus say that I love you, that I created you in my image, that I died for you, that I love you. Listen, he can fill that place that no one else can get to today. Glory to God. Somebody needs to hear the voice of God say, I love you, that I died for you. If you had been the only sinner, that I still would have died. You are enough. <laughs> Just listen, you plus nothing. You don't have to fix anything. You don't have to change anything. You don't have to become anything. You don't have to look like anybody. You don't have to be like anybody. Just like you are right now, you are enough. Glory to God. Somebody hear the voice of God speaking to you today. You don't have to be jealous. You don't have to be petty. You don't have to come up, uh, uh, be negative. You don't have to be the loudest. You don't have to try to be the smartest. You don't have to bend over backwards to please people. You don't have to become a doormat to be accepted. I came to tell somebody today, Jesus sent me to tell you, you are enough right now. You plus nothing. You are enough for him. He created you to be you. Like in the text, this woman, we, we like this woman, listen, you need to get to Jesus. That's all I'm saying. For your internal issues, you need to get to Jesus. 
Listen, this woman had hemorrhaged for 12 long years. <laughs> She had been rejected. The, 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 the Jewish law was that if you were hemorrhaging, you were unclean and you were not fit for society. You had to stay away. So listen, the scripture says, yes, she had been pushed back. Yes, she had been rejected. Yes, she wasn't welcome in, in, in society and among those who felt like they had a right to be in the crowd. According to people, she didn't have a right to be in the crowd. But guess what? She made it up in her mind that I'm tired of my situation. I'm tired of being like this. I'm tired of being on the outside side looking in. Are you tired today of feeling oppressed? Are you tired of feeling depressed? Are you tired of that heaviness that follows you around like a shadow all day, every day? Are you tired of not feeling like you can accomplish what you want to accomplish? Are you tired of, of being walked on by people? If you're tired, get up and get in the press this morning and say, I will get to Jesus. I will. I don't care who told me I'm not enough. I hear the voice of God saying, I am enough and I'm going to rise up right now in my spirit. I'm going to rise up right now and I'm going to receive the word of God. I'm going to appropriate the word of God for myself and I'm going to reach out and touch the Lord while he's passing by. While the woman of God is declaring what thus saith the Lord, I'm going to reach out right now. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to try to fix anything. I'm not going to wait for anybody else. I'm not going to try to get anything else together. I'm enough right now. I have a right to be in this press and I will touch him this morning and I will receive my deliverance and I declare over my own life, come on, that from this day forward, I'll never be the same. Come on, write it down. I am enough and I will never be the same and I'll never allow anybody else to tell me or to make me feel that I have to earn my place in the press. Come on. I, Jesus gave it to me because I'm enough. Hallelujah. I don't have to earn it. He gave it to me. He gave it to me. She said, if I can just touch, listen, she began to talk to herself. I, that's what I want you to do today. You need to begin to minister to yourself. I, sh look, she said, I will. Oh yes, I will. I will get up. Come on. I will be healed this day. Come on, say it for yourself. I'm going to rise up right now and I will touch him. I'm enough. I'm not trying to earn my place in the press. I might have been rejected by man, but I'm accepted in the beloved. Glory to God. I, he has embraced me. He has welcomed me. I'm not trying to buy a place. I'm not trying to earn a place. I don't have to steal a place. I've got a place in him. He gave it to me. She said, I'm going to touch the hem of his garment. You know, hemming, to put the hem in a garment, is the last process that a seamstress does to complete the work. The hem is the last thing that goes in. Here is what I believe she says. Here's what I believe this shows us. The work is finished. The work is finished. Look, this woman said, "I." It, she didn't say if I can touch his shoulder. She did. She didn't say if I could touch the breastplate of his garment or whatever. She said if I can touch the hem of his garment. I believe that she was putting her confidence. This shows us that the work of salvation, the work of deliverance, the work of the cross is a finished work. I can put my confidence this morning. You can put your confidence in the finished work of the cross. <laughs> no one can add to it and no one can take away from it. Release that internal issue to the Lord. Come on, make a decision right now. Lord, I, I've carried it so long. I've, I've felt inferior for so long. 
I've, I've carried the echo of the negative words that have been spoken over me for so long. I've, 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 I've tried to please people for so long that I don't even really remember where it started. Maybe my mom said something to me that set it in motion, or maybe I was bullied at school in first grade. I, I, I've carried this, this pocket of pain for so long that I don't even remember where it started. But today, I choose to release it to you, Lord. Not some of it, all of it. I choose to release it by faith to you, God. Everything that has hurt me. Come on, release it. Everything that has hurt me, everything from my earliest memory until this moment, everything that has hurt me, everything that made me feel less than, everything that made me feel inferior, everything that made me feel like I was not enough, I release it to you now, Lord. Everyone who hurt me, not just everything, Everyone who hurt me, everyone who rejected me, everyone who abused me, I release them. I forgive them. I release them right now by faith. I will no longer carry them and their words and their actions on my inside, on my shoulders, in my heart, in my spirit. I choose to release them. Everyone who abandoned you, those who walked away that you wished had a stay, I release them to their good life. Come on, come on, release it. Everyone who's tried to destroy me, I release them. Every negative word, I release it. I release it now. I no longer have to carry this. Let Jesus stop the bleeding so you can live free and strong. When we come to the place where we are able to receive our healing, Jesus changes everything. Everything. We are no longer the one with the hemorrhage. We're no longer weak and anemic. Come on, some of us have been anemic. We are anemic saints <laughs> because we are, we've been hemorrhaging for so long. We don't have the power that we should have. We don't have the tenacity that we should have. We don't have the joy that we should have because we are anemic because of what somebody said, because of what somebody did. We can now be used by God. Listen, and this is the key. If you don't remember anything I said today, remember this. Once you release your suffering, your pain, your hemorrhage, once you allow the Holy Spirit to go down on the inside and heal you, and now you begin to be strong and you're no longer weak and anemic and frail. Now, here's the good news. You can become the source of healing for others. God can now use you to tell somebody else, yes, I understand. I see it because that was me until I touched the hem of his garment. I understand why you try to be so loud. I understand why it, you, you feel like you always need to be right. I understand why you're so thin skinned, but I came to tell you that Jesus is the answer. Here's the prayer that I want you to pray today. Holy Spirit, go to the source of my pain. Expose it to me so that I can surrender it all to you. Did you hear that? That's your prayer today. Holy Spirit, go to the source of my pain. Expose it to me 
so that I then may surrender it to you. That's it. It's internal. It's internal. If you've been struggling with having meaningful relationships with family, with friends, romantic relationships, it, work relationships, if you've been struggling, feeling that you've got to, you've got to say yes to everything, including things that you want to say no to, just to so people would like you. Stop that today. Stop being a doormat. That doesn't make people love you. It just makes you be a, be used. No, it was never God's intent that you be used and abused by anyone. But it's internal. Release it. Release it today. Holy Spirit, go to the source of my pain. Expose it to me, Lord, so that I can release it all to you. I want to be healed. I want to be whole. I want to be free. And your word says, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I pray that the word of God has encouraged you today. You, my sister. You, my brother. You're enough. You're not trying to earn. Don't try to earn your place. Don't try to buy your place. Jesus has given you your place because he created you in his likeness and in his image. And you are already enough. Glory to God. Oh, come on. Go ahead and tell God thank you for the truth of his word, for the truth of his word. I pray that you will share this with someone today. Somebody else needs to know that they're enough. I pray that you believe it. I pray that from this day forward that you make a declaration that you will never again be the same, that you will not allow yourself to be used, that you will not allow yourself to be abused, that you're not going to try to earn it, that you're going to walk in your freedom, that you're going to walk in the newness of life, that you're going to show up and you're going to do what the word of God says. You're going to occupy all your space. You're going to occupy because you have a right to live and to be free because Jesus gave it to you. Come back next time. I believe there will be another fresh word from the Lord. God bless you. Walk in your freedom. You are enough. Amen. Have a great rest of your Wednesday.